Hi, I'm Crystal Hart, and welcome to The Crystal Hart Show. And my question is, do you like art? Well, if you do, we have a show that you're going to love. We are here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery in the heart of Chelsea. With me is Ruthie Tucker, the owner of the gallery. Behind me, you see all types of colors and visuals. And Ruthie, tell me, tell our audience, what can we expect today? Amsterdam Whitney Gallery's fall holiday exhibit is showcasing the Chelsea Biennale, which showcases the leading international and national artists of the world and of America and of North America. And we are proud to feature abstract landscape, figurative work, um, surrealism, works that are uh, splendiferous with color and wonderful artistic vision. And we also felt a theme of the Chelsea Biennale Crystal was for healing. Art is healing, art is magical, art um, offers uh, humanity our beautiful thoughts of harmony, of being spiritual, of coming together, and of union. And I can think of no uh, more beautiful uh, environment and aesthetic um, ambiance than Amsterdam Whitney Gallery to feature beautiful art and the beautiful crystal heart. Thank you very much, Crystal. And I think what you said about healing, and there is a, a, a feeling of calm and peace, and just walking around the gallery, uh, you must come down and, and, and visit it. It, it, it's, it is a spiritual, uplifting feeling, especially in somewhat hard times right now. But uh, yes, now behind us, we have a lot of colors, Little, they're uh, smaller little paintings, but uh, uh, bright and attractive. Could you tell us about this artist? Thank it's you, Crystal. This is right behind me is Miss Ronnie Dalpelt, uh, an artist from Florida, and this is called her Heartbeat Series. Ronnie very much um, uh, believes in the spiritual healing of art, and every year her exhibition has a theme. Last year was Magical Glow, this year is Heartbeat, because she feels art helps our hearts mend, that we can grow from the love, from the color. Mm -hmm. And I like to think that Ronnie Lynn Delpit's beautiful colors reflect the Florida sunshine, the vivacity of the sun, the brightness of shades, the vibrance of the hues. And each one of her uh, little works are treasures because they reflect the heartbeat of our soul and the heartbeat of life. And so I hope that you do enjoy these beautiful works of Ronnie Lynn Delpelt from Florida. And right in the corner there, I, I see a heart. <laughs> yes, exactly. Built into that that painting, I, I was uh, as I was photographing the work, I, I noticed that it's a mystique. She offers the allure of the heart because the heart is what engages us as human beings and as humankind. And um, she offers her heart to all of her viewers, just like Crystal Heart <laughs> offers her heart to all the viewers of the Crystal Heart Show. Our next artist is Nancy Belmert, and she is the Yellow Rose of Texas. And what I do know about Nancy is that her and her husband, Paul, travel all over the world, and she photographs flowers and then paints them. So all of these are, are, are coming from all different locations of the world. So now we have uh, Ruthie Tucker, who will tell us more and elaborate on Nancy's work. It is my pleasure to introduce Nancy Balmert, known as the Queen of Flowers and the Yellow Rose of Texas, as Crystal so wittingly applied that excellent name. We are so proud at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, we have just sold Nancy Balmert's uh, Midas Touch Rose right behind me, which is the Yellow Rose of Texas, to a prominent collector, and Nancy's work sells worldwide. 
Nancy and her husband, Paul, travel extensively. Nancy receives so many international prizes. Nancy and Paul go to Italy. They go to Belgium. They go to France. They go to England. They go to Italy, and they receive very prestigious awards because Nancy's work is so highly acclaimed. Some people say Nancy's work is reminiscent of Georgia O'Keeffe, and who Georgia O'Keeffe stated, I have never met a flower I did not like. And I think that that is uh, echoes in Nancy Baumert's work. Nancy loves a flower, is always in the search for the perfect rose, the most beautiful begonia, whether it would be in uh, Bush Gardens or whether it be in Italy. Nancy finds perfection in everything she paints, and she's a master colorist, her textures, her layers. She gives us um, a sense of healing, a sense of beauty, to be connected with nature. Uh, I think of Henry David Thoreau, whose work, um, he advises us to be at one with nature. And Nancy, indeed, is at one with nature, with her very upfront, very close up, enlarged, enhanced paintings that encourage us to embrace nature, to inhale its beauty and exhale its joy. And we at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery and all of our collectors thank Nancy Balmert as we inhale her beauty and exhale her joy of nature. Nancy Balmert, once again, who is known for searching for the perfect lily, the perfect rose, she takes photographs and then spends months in her studio painting her oil paintings. They are laboriously worked on with layers upon layers, really reflecting the old master touch, how she reflects the shimmering, the translucency of the work, and um, the intricacy of her painted uh, patterns of the flowers to enhance the love of nature and the love of beauty. Our next artist, John Peters, comes from Detroit, and he is magical realism. And uh, his uh, paintings are behind me. I know that sometimes he uses a lot of gold, which, which takes, he has told me before, much time, much effort. And, uh, and everything sort of pops, and it's bold, and it's happy. And Ruthie, tell us a little bit more. Thank you, Crystal. John Peters uh, hails from Detroit, Michigan, and it is also inspired by the landscape of New Hampshire. John is known as the master of magical realism because his works become almost anthropomorphic. As Crystal said, they pop out. There's a three-dimensionality to them. John incorporates the very intrinsic and very exquisite work of a gold leaf and silver leaf, which is very time consuming. But what John's um, uh, clients and patrons love the most about him is the vivacity of his colors. Some people say he's a modern German expressionist. Some people, Crystal, say he's a French fauvist because uh, the love of color, the dash, the pop of tones, the layers upon layers of the landscape of nature, the fall foliage that he sees in um, New Hampshire, which he loves to drive and go there. Um, he sees bridges, he sees flowers. Behind us, I, uh, my favorite are his magic flowers, that they take on shapes. They, if you look closely, I see people's faces in them, I see eyes, I see them embracing life. And John's magic realism is a helpful cure for today's um, uh, overview of life. It gives us joy. It gives us a sense of um, French say, a joie de vivre. It gives us happiness because John is interconnecting with nature once again, part of our Chelsea Biennale's theme of love of nature, love of healing, that nature unites us, that nature heals us, that nature has a spiritual moment to us. We see some, uh, he even does moonlight paintings. He loves the sun, he loves the, the flowers, he loves the trees, and he also loves the moon and the blueness and the almost austerity of this uh, a painting here to our left. We are featuring John in our starlight room, which has the, um, if you look up above Crystal, 
This is the uh, sun and the stars shine down on Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, and we are thrilled and proud to have John Peters shine his stars, his sun, his flowers, his landscape, his magic realism on Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. Our next artist is a prominent West Coast architect. He comes also by way of Ohio, which is uh, the state I'm from. And uh, Ruthie, tell us a little bit more about his work. Thank you, Crystal. Lawrence Armstrong, who is a very recognized architect, uh, can, uh, is inspired by architecture, and his themes are layered visions. His One of the predominant themes of Lawrence Armstrong is controlling the chaos, chaos versus order. And he feels that through his geometric approach to art, what we would call wall hangings, uh, it helps us control the chaos of the world. These are catalysts for us understanding the world better. Lawrence also entitles his um, body of work Layered Visions because these are constructed as a form of architecture. When we received um, his artwork crystal, we had to, it was a blueprint, and it was very intricate to install because it reflected his architectural background. And once again, in a very um, a tumultuous world, Lawrence Armstrong's work is very inspiring because it's the attempt and his aspiration to control chaos through order. I hope you will all enjoy the work of this noted and recognized California architect and artist, Lawrence Armstrong. Thank you. Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery is an international art gallery, and the work behind uh, both of us of Arushi Kumar from India reflects this. With us, Ruthie. Ruthie, tell us more about this Thank artist. Thank you. Once again, Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is so global, and we are thrilled to feature and showcase Arushi Kumar from India. Her work is the abstract, non-figurative, displaying the emotions of the world, of her feelings, of the rhythm of life. Um, she feels very interconnected to nature and is inspired by Hans Hoffman, who stated that life and nature are interconnected. So uh, Arushi paints with um, a nonverbal language, with emotion, with color, with abstract forms to convey the rhythm and the syncopated feelings that she feels uh, about the world, about relationships, about her points and counterpoints of the universe. And we are thrilled to showcase this artist, Arushi Kumar, in our Chelsea Biennale exhibition at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, because it's important to realize um, the invisible within the visible. And she is taking our invisible thoughts and visualizing them in a non-objective form. And we congratulate Arushi Kumar, and we are thrilled to showcase her beautiful ethereal art. And if you look at it, uh, right behind me is a diptych. A diptych is a double painting, taking two paintings and putting them together because Arushi had so many concepts and so much um, uh, visceral emotion that she wanted to, to convey that she felt that one canvas was not even enough that two canvases could display all of her emotion and all of her thoughts on the universe. Miss Arushi Kumar. Thank you, Crystal. Allow me to introduce to you the work of Michael Glazer, a Russian-American artist, more specifically, the Ukraine, and now living with his family in Brooklyn. If one looks at the work of Michael Glazer, one can also see the inspiration of Marc Chagall, who was also a Russian artist the sense of fantasy blended with reality, the sense of the whimsical, the sense of the fantastic, along with the realistic. These, are, these works of Michael Glazer really reflect Michael's love of his homeland, um, of times that are gentler, times that are quieter, times that whisper of love and of peace with nature. Uh, Michael Glazer so uh, loves his oil and cardboard work, 
And uh, oil and cardboard is also a very interesting medium because the cardboard uh, picks up the texture of the paint. And uh, collectors love the Michael Glazer works because of the uh, layers of oil and uh, the three-dimensionality. I look at Michael Glazer's work and I often feel a nostalgia for times past. I sometimes feel they're like a sepia postcard that one would uh, buy if one were visiting Russia, if one were walking um, on the Seine in, in Paris, that you look at these old-fashioned postcards and yearn for beautiful times, that they whisper of love, of gentleness, of being at one with nature. And um, I can almost sometimes hear um, a Marc Chagall, maybe some one person said they heard the fiddler on the roof in the background of the, of the artist at nature, the artist walking through his village and um, yearning to the past, looking to the past and reminding us of gentler whispering of quiet and spiritual times, Michael Glazer. I also would like to introduce to you that we have published works on Michael Glazer. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery uh, has published our graphic book. Michael is very renowned for doing graphics. He's also renowned for large-scale, fantastic paintings that uh, reflect the joie de vivre of life. Michael is also a theater designer, a set designer. He's a man who is multi-talented, a Renaissance man, that it, it is New York's gain to have this international artist here in the United States. And we are blessed to have the work of Michael Glazer in our Chelsea Biennale, At One With Nature, Michael Glazer. Timeless floral still lives of Robin Capecci. Beautiful, beautiful work. What is it about flowers? And, and I just love paintings of flowers. Flowers are eternal, and Robin carries the tradition of the Dutch masters with the sense of painting the eternal flower, which is timeless. There are no figures, there's no identification. Was this painting painted yesterday, Crystal, or was it painted 200 years ago? That's the quest of a perfect floral still life. It's a petite treasure. It honors our floral universe it honors the sanctity of everyday bouquets that we could see on a table, on a dinner table, a breakfast table. And it's always um, been the quest of artists to paint the floral still life because they love to enshrine the flower and to make us always treasure our, our little um, uh, everyday life. That's one of the main concepts about still life is to uh, appreciate everyday little adornments of life and um, creating a quiet sense of stillness and a love of nature and an eternal love of the universe. Robin Capecci is from Maryland, and Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is honored to be showcasing her art in one of her first New York exhibits, and the collectors have gone wild over her art because they feel that they have a touch of the classic always in her beautiful work, carrying on the Dutch still life tradition, Robin Capecci. Our next artist is from Canada, Patricia Nedden, and she shows the power of nature. And we have paintings here. Of beautiful, beautiful. You can feel it, actually. It, it's so strong, the power of nature. That's exactly it. When one observes uh, Patricia Nedden's paintings, one can see that there are no figures. Patricia really shines a spotlight on the majesty of nature on its divine presence, its divine power. Her oil paintings reflect the strength of the world and one can almost hear the leaves rush, rustling, one can almost see uh, water flowing, one can almost feel that one is walking through nature when we observe her paintings. We can also see that her palette is very powerful crystal, that these are very, um, very 
powerful, strong, vibrant blues. She wants to re reflect the passion of the world. She wants us to be, once again, at one with nature. It's a different view. It's a powerful view, not a quiet view, but a view that's saying, come and enjoy life. Let's dance. Let's have a dance with nature. Let's have a rhythm. Let's bring out the trumpets and, and the bugles, and let's rejoice in the splendiferous world. Let's celebrate the world, and shall we all celebrate the paintings of Patricia Nedden, our North American nature, our North American artist from Canada. Crystal, as we're traveling in the floral kingdom, as we journey in the natural world of Henry David Thoreau, Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is proud to once again shine the spotlight on Adrian Kairos. Mrs. Kairos is an artist from Illinois and her watercolors are world renowned due to the fact of their intense vibrancy. Adrian Kairos creates watercolors which are powerful, not quiet. One often associates uh, watercolor as a gentler palette, but Adrian Cairo has zap and power and strength in her works of art. She's known for her floral and her landscape work, and we are so thrilled to uh, feature her beautiful watercolors. We've also published Amsterdam. Whitney Gallery has published a beautiful book on Adrian Kairos's watercolors. Uh, there are the scenes where she travels to the west, to the Midwest, to Florida, and collectors just are astonished by the strength and the passion of her powerful watercolor genre. Adrian Kairos. We're going to introduce a dash of international flavor with Dahlia Berlin. She's Spanish. She now resides in Miami, and this is a tribute to her legacy. Dahlia Berlin honors her Spanish heritage and the old master Velazquez with the Las Maninas series that was made so famous by Velazquez when he painted the court of Philip IV, the Habsburg King, and all the little princesses whom they called Las Maninas. And I also have to give a little note, I think when I met uh, Dahlia Berlin, that she even looked like one of the little princesses, Las Maninas. Dahlia makes um, collage work. And what is so special, collage are layered, uh, she takes different materials and incorporates them into a painting. It's not just straight paint, but she can take uh, textures, fabrics, different articles that she sees that can intrigue her. And if you look closely behind us, she also blends the old, old master, and she's the new master, because you see she has an homage to New York. She's celebrating New York and the fantastic vibrancy of New York, and that's what makes Dahlia so very popular. Dahlia now resides in Miami. She's an interior decorator, a very um, highly recognized and successful decorator, and she incorporates, as we were saying, a sublage. She assembles materials to, to bring back the old and intermingles it with the new. And we can see um, the, uh, the identifiable hairstyle of Valeska, this little Las Maninas, and she calls her series Las Maninas on My Mind. And we love it because Amsterdam Whitney Gallery is also known for intermingling the old with the new and honoring the past as we move forward to the present with new journeys and new future. And a fabulous artist, Dahlia Berlin. Our next artist is Italian and British, Victoria Ascanio, and she is celebrating the 134th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty. Lady Liberty, a beacon of light, shines her light on all of us. Victoria Escanio is also recognized for her iconic New York landmarks. And right uh, to my right are three different perspectives of the Frank Lloyd Wright building, the Guggenheim Museum, which has always intrigued collectors, artists, and visitors because it's a round dome. And um, some people have said it's a donut on top of a donut. And Victoria 
uh, gives us an international perspective radiating from her Italo-British background. And it's always intriguing to see what um, the eyes of our iconic Guggenheim Museum through an international perspective, Victoria Escanio. Also featured in Amsterdam Whitney Gallery's Chelsea Biennale is the international Finnish artist, Professor Rita Nellamarka. Rita Nellamarka creates animated in imagery that integrates the fantastical with a dash of the reality. She's created several books and her alter ego is Elise, who is, has wonderful journeys through life through the color spectrum of the world. And Rita creates um, non-objective, uh, semi-abstracted forms that tell visceral emotions through color, through passion, through whimsy, as she blends um, the fantastical with a dash of the real. We journey with her through the subconscious. It's a labyrinth of joy and a labyrinth sometimes of the pain of life, but I always look at her art with the bold colors, Crystal, the reds and the orange and the bright greens. I feel that she is rejoicing in the uh, passion of life. This is not a sad journey. It's an exciting journey. It's a journey that's going to lead us to a new end, a happy ending. Yes, there is a rainbow at the end of the lane for Professor Finnish artist Rita Nellamarka. Next is pop artist Cora Cronemeyer. And as you see, it does pop. Colors are bold, bright, exciting, happy. The vivacity of Cora Cronemeyer's polychromatic palette makes us feel excited about the world. Cora also has a socio-political commentary in many of her works. She cares deeply about social concern, but she uses the vehicle of color to convey her emotions, which I feel are very visceral, but very strong, and still there's a belief in the goodness of the world with the, uh, the passion and the strength of her wonderful color palette. Cora Cronemeyer, an outstanding pop artist based in New York City. Lori Moll is our next artist from California. She loves music, but she also always incorporates a heart into her work. So collectors love to try and find that heart. And I'm Crystal Hart, and I see this heart right here. Thank you, Lori Moll. Well, it's time to say goodbye. This has been such a wonderful walking tour of Amsterdam a Whitney Art Gallery. Ruthie, say a few words for our audience. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you for honoring Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. We wish you, Crystal, champagne wishes and floral dreams. To all of you, God bless. Thank you so much. Be well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Champagne and floral dreams. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Bye from Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Bye.